Hey, welcome back to the Flamingo Advantage podcast. I'm super excited to dive in today to how to take your own experience, your own hard story, your own struggle, and turn it into a business that impacts others. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Katie Horner. Welcome back to the Flamingo Advantage podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. This is someone who I've met through a coaching experience that we both participate in. And she has a very unique business where she was able to take her own experience of overcoming something that is is looked down upon by most of society and uh, be able to turn that into a business that helps other people. And so I want you to join me today to welcome Kate B, who is the founder of The Sober School. Kate, I'm so excited to have you with us on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and yeah, talk a bit about this. So tell us about your sobriety journey. Your your business is called The Sober School. Obviously, you, you founded this. This is something that came out of your own personal experience. Share a little bit about that and how you were able to, to take that experience and turn it into a business. Yeah. So my business definitely started with me and my own personal experience uh, with alcohol. I really struggled with my drinking almost from the get-go, but particularly in my late 20s, I felt as if I was the only person in the world who I wasn't a normal drinker, but I wasn't a raging like rock-bottom alcoholic. When you see people in the movies who are struggling with drinking, they are always like drinking in the morning. Um, they've something really bad happens to them. Nothing like that happened to me. I had a you know, quite a good job. I had a very nice apartment. I had a lot of things going for me. I was outwardly quite successful, and yet whenever I drank, I drank more than I wanted to, and I also drank a lot on my own. If I was sad, if I was having a bad time, if I was lonely, stressed, whatever, I really enjoyed drinking on my own. And it's very confusing for me because I grew up in the like 90s, noughties, and I'm British. We have a very heavy drinking culture. A lot of it's quite normalized, but I felt as if I crossed the line and there was just nothing out there to help me. It was basically go to AA meetings and do a 12-step program, which... I don't want to be seen to criticize that at all because it's such a great fit for some people. But when I tried it and I went to some meetings in my area, it just didn't click with me. And then that was about it, really. There, there just didn't seem to be anything else out there. I spoke to my doctor about it and he suggest, he said to me, oh, why don't you just drink a little bit less? And I was like, oh, duh, you don't think I've thought of that? It, there was just so little support. And so I ended up reading loads of books and just trying to find my own path to sobriety. And I wrote a blog about it as well, an anonymous blog to begin with. And it was actually through doing that that I began to see, oh, I'm not on my own. There are lots and lots of people We're all tucked away in this corner of the internet and we feel the same. So yeah, that's a bit of my like story. Well, I, I think it's so interesting that you, you recognize that like, there's either, you're either okay, or you're like beyond help. And those are the people we have help for kind of thing. And, and that finding that middle ground for you was like, you know, I, I think a lot of people feel that way. Like, I think this could be a problem. Um, but I don't know what to do about it. And, and I'm not, I'm not so bad to need that kind of help kind of thing. And and they don't know where to go. And I love the fact that you're like, well, I can figure this out. And you did it for yourself. And then what happened to make you want to turn this into something that you use to help other people? Yeah, I so after I really quit drinking, and I probably got about three, four months um, completely sober, which is the longest I'd done in, in ages, I started questioning a lot of things in my life and I realized that I wasn't very happy in my job. And so I found this online course that was there to help you figure out what you did want to do. And the way this online course was set up, I remember distinctly one evening thinking, oh my goodness, there should be something like this for people who want to stop drinking alcohol. Something that you log into where there are pre recorded videos, so you do a bit of learning, and there's also a Facebook group or some kind of social element. And maybe these 
I don't know if we were meeting on Zoom, because this is like going back 10 years, we're meeting on some kind of live platform. And I thought, yes, this would be such a good idea. Someone should do this. And for a long time, the idea existed in my head, but I didn't believe that it was me that was going to do it because I'd never done anything like that before. I don't come from a family of entrepreneurs. I was not the little kid selling lemonade and making money from that, all those things that I hear my other entrepreneurial friends did. So I kind of stewed over this idea for ages, thinking about it. And then one day, it really felt like the universe gave me this signal that I was supposed to do this. So I was on this train, from the little town where I live, going into Manchester, and someone had left a newspaper on the seat next to me, and I started reading it. Uh, So it wasn't even my newspaper. And in this newspaper, there was an article about a, a social enterprise body where you could apply, if you had an idea for a business that had some kind of social good, like a good cause behind it, you could apply for them, and they were giving out small grants. And so I like ripped out this little piece from the paper and took it home and I put an application in, never thought I'd hear anything of it, but I got invited to an interview and then a second interview and I had to pitch my idea in a kind of shark tank style environment. That's what it felt like to me anyway. And um, to my (laughs) surprise, they gave me this grant for £4,000 which is about 5,000 US dollars, I think. And that was just amazing. And then, like, boom, I was in. Because not only had I got the money to get myself going, which I now look back and realize I didn't really need that much money, but I thought I did. But the massive thing I got with it was an award manager who would only give me chunks of the money once I'd done certain things. And that's really how my journey started, sort of after a whim application that turned out into into something that I was just meant to do, I think. I love that story. And I love how it also kind of gave you a confirmation, right? The fact that they awarded you the grant means somebody else believes in this idea too. And and I think that's that's huge for entrepreneurs that are like, I don't know if this will work, right? And to have somebody else say, yeah, I think it will work. Um, can be huge for us. Yeah, yeah, it was massive. I look back now and I think, yes, the money was great, but what that really gave me was accountability and belief because I didn't have a lot of belief in myself and I think that's the biggest hurdle in those early days, especially where I was at that time. Yes, I got my own lived experience and I'd done a lot of research and I used some of the grant money to do a course in cognitive behavioral therapy. So I got a bit of training. But at the end of the day, this wasn't like something I'd been working on for decades. And I had a lot of imposter syndrome about that. Like, who am I to to do this? And yeah, so getting that award did help with that. It did give me a bit more confidence. What would you say has been the most rewarding thing about building a business like this that helps other people? I think it has to be hearing from people how it's changed their lives. I mean, sure, there's all the stuff that, you know, I obviously I I make a living from this now. I love being my own boss. I love working from home. You know, I'm speaking to you today from a house that I definitely wouldn't have been able to afford to buy if I carried on in my past job. So those are all amazing bonuses. But I get to work with some of the smartest women, like frighteningly intelligent women who are just brilliant, but they're completely held back by this drinking problem. And they go home at night and they drink too much in their kitchen and they wake up feeling ashamed and they hate themselves. And when you can help someone break out of that, it's just amazing to see the transformation in them. And when I hear from, you know, women who say things to me like, oh, I just had my grandkids over to stay this weekend. Um, When I was still drinking, my daughter didn't really want me having the kids overnight because she was worried about my drinking. Or, you know, I have someone who's just finally finished their degree 
because they're not drinking. They've got their headspace and they're retraining and completely changing their career. Or people who do really brave things, like they get sober and realize they're not in the right relationship and they make these scary big moves that actually are the right moves for them, but they couldn't see it when they were kind of clouded by alcohol. Uh, yeah, it, it's so incredibly rewarding just seeing people go back to who they're meant to be. Do you ever think about what it would be like if you had not started a business? Yeah, I don't know what I would have done. I think perhaps I would have started a business of some sort because I read a book around the time that I was thinking of the sober school and it was called the $100 business or something like that. It's about how you could get started with relatively little. And I was fascinated by it. It really piqued my interest. Yeah, I don't know. I It was like I stopped drinking and I woke up and realized, oh, I'm so bored with this job. Oh, you know, and I, I don't know if to say this. I started building my business literally whilst I was at work some days. I would do my work. I would be physically present in the office and then I'd be writing a blog post or doing something else. And I just had this hunger to figure out this business that I hadn't had in any other job in years. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad it happened. What would you say to somebody else who's like, I don't know if my personal experience is valuable? Like, yeah, that sounds great for Kate. She was able to overcome something, turn it into a business, but I don't know if I can do that too what would be your your advice or encouragement to them? I think we all get that imposter syndrome. We all have those thoughts. I completely understand them. And at the same time, there is someone out there who's waiting to hear what you've got to share. They want to hear whatever it is you, you've got to teach them. They want to hear it in the way that you're going to teach them. Because I, I notice some people get really hung up on the fact that, oh, well, there's already a business where people do this or someone else is doing that. But you know what? They're not doing it in the way that you are. And I have lots of people come to work with me. And this isn't the first time they've tried to get help with their drinking. But they say to me, oh, but Kate, there's something about you that I just connected with. Your story, the way you explain things. I felt that you really saw me and that made all the difference. And I know that will be absolutely the same for you, Katie. Other people, they'll connect with something that you say. And for someone else who's listening to this, they've got a way of explaining it. That if it lands for that person, that's the most important thing. I mean, it, it, if you've got something to share with the world, it really is a crime to keep it to yourself. Hmm. I love that. I, that's a wonderful place to end this too. If you've got something to share with the world, it's a crime to keep it to yourself. We say all the time on here, your message matters. And I think, you know, you're a perfect example of that, Kate, and taking a personal experience, personal crisis, and having turned that into something that can benefit others and get the message of hope and help out there to make a difference in the lives of other people. And I'm, I'm so thrilled with the work that you're doing and grateful. For those of you that are listening, we want you to go and connect with Kate over at thesoberschool.com. She is based in the UK, but her classes and her courses are all online and anyone can attend from anywhere. And so if you need this, go check it out. If you know someone else who needs this, go check it out. And if you have that stirring inside of you about a personal experience that you know God wants you to be using in business to help other people, let this be your newspaper sign that it's time to go and do something. Take that step and turn it into something that can help out others because your message does matter. So thank you so much, Kate, for being with us today. Thank you. I love talking to you. All right, my friends, take that first step. Your message matters to someone who's waiting for it. We'll see you in the next episode.